How are you? Well, obvious first question. We all hope to see you yesterday. Oh, what happened? Oh yeah, well, a few little miscommunications. And, um, for the open work, I didn't have a trainer anyway, so I was gonna come out and do a little skit for the fans here, pretty much. I was gonna have to come up with something, but uh, yeah, I just uh, I didn't really I had to go back home for some things, so uh, I didn't make it here as soon as I would have liked to. So I apologize to all the fans, especially the ones that were here to see an open workout. I didn't really put too much thought into it. I was just more focused on the fight. And, uh, you know, I've showed up on a, I've, I've done, pulled the same card a couple of times. I showed up on Wednesday. Uh, it's pretty considerate of me. So again, I apologize to all the fans and people who were anticipating, uh, you know, a show on uh, Wednesday. So, uh, Again, uh, my apologies. So people trying to read into that and trying to say, well, what's going through Nick's mind right now? Why is he not there? Is that yeah. is people overthinking it a little too much? Well, there's a lot going on, but you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of, you know, not just stuff going on in my mind. There's a lot of things going on. So I'm dealing, a lot of times I'm just dealing with that and sorting that out. And, uh, the thing is, I'm not going to stress out over it. And I'm not going to go lose sleep over anything. I'm going to do what I got to do to get here. Um, you know, as soon as I can get here. And I've learned, you know, with my experience and you know, with what's going on right now today and, and uh, uh, who I am, what I'm doing, what's what, I'm like, I'm just gonna do my best to get here um, at 100 percent, the best of my ability, and, and focus on what's most important, and that's uh, you know my my health and safety. So uh, uh, that's I'm always thinking that number one. So you know, a lot of times uh, something's going on. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be here to fight. You can assure, like, uh, you know, that's the only thing that's going through my head is me taking into consideration, you know, my health and safety before what's what. And I'm just doing what I got to do to get here for you and do the best I can. So, uh, again, my apologies for not, not making it on Wednesday. When you say your health, though, what does that mean? You just mean in terms of it getting means, to weight? I'm not trying to rush anything for anybody. You know, I'm like, I got a deadline. I know what that is. That's, uh, you know. Um, come, come, um, make weight on Friday. Come fight on on, on Saturday. You know, I'll do the best I can. Put on a show for fans. Um, you know, fight for fans. Come in 100% for fans. Um, and if I'm going to do that, the best of my capability, I'm going to take as much room as I can to do that. Um, you know, at this point in time, regardless of whatever obligations I may have, I just, uh, for me, I'm going to have to do what I got to do. And. Like I said again, I apologize to uh, uh, you know Dana White and all the UFC and every, you know everybody's uh, prepared and kind of didn't get a uh, you know kind of didn't really end up knowing what was going on with me or whatever. But you know it was just, uh, for me it really wasn't a big deal. I'm like, hey, look, I gotta do what I gotta do and then uh, come to fight. Do you like the way they marketed it though? You know, with the milk carton cans. I mean, they kind of had fun with the idea of where's sure, Nick. Yeah, go ahead. You know, they're, they're going to get a show out of. They're going to, you know, they're going to have something. You know, regardless of whether they're going to have to say whatever they want to say. So they have fun. They're this fine. I'm not, you know, I'm like hey, you're going to do. They're going to do what they like. So. Did you talk to Dana or Lorenzo after that happened? And what was that conversation like? If so. I didn't. Dana sent me a text and. Um, he said, hey, give me a call or text me if you can. I actually missed the text from a couple weeks. Things always change his number or something. Plus, I got a new Apple ID thing situation, so I lost all my old numbers, and I was like, I didn't know if I had it or not. But um, anyways, yeah, he texted me a couple days, so I missed a text a couple days from him. Because I would text him back and text me, but then uh, I got another one um, that I missed by like an hour. So I texted him back, and I said, hey, uh, you know, at the airport in Sack here. He said, great, that's all I want to hear. That's pretty much what I was hoping to hear. Something, some, something to that effect. And um, yeah, he just said that's awesome, and that's that's that. It's you know so um, you know I'm sure I'm sure Andrew, you know people that know me are, are know you know I, and, and for the record I'd like to you know I'd love to be here for uh, you know a workout about a workout plan and um, you know but I'm just I'm going through a few different things to train in you know being out a year or two you know there's some good with the bad and some bad with the good and all that you know all that stuff so I just you know really wasn't. Um, you know, prepared for a, a Wednesday out here. After all that time that you have had off, what is it like to be back and have like all of this media back around you? What are your feelings right now? Um, it's a, you know, it's pretty. It feels pretty easy going for me. You know, I've had a lot of 
um, as much time as I've had off, just like from the beginning when I started fighting, um, I feel like uh, the exposure of this uh, of MMA, mixed martial arts, is, is it's kind of multiplying, and you know, it's um, you know I was doing this way before it was cool, and uh, you know that's why I'm here today, and uh, you know so no matter you know it just keep everything just keeps adding on, you know people recognition and. Um, just, you know, it's, it's never ending really. I don't think I'm gonna have to fight right now. People are still gonna be talking about my fights because I did, you know, I've, I've been out um, fought, fighting for a while and headlined a lot of, headlined a lot of events that people, you know, bought, paid for it, and they showed up for it, you know, so they know, they know who they're coming to see nowadays. So, uh, you know, but so to me, it's, you know, it comes natural for me to fight. So Nick, you've been out for a while. What's been the biggest motivating factor for you to return to the UFC and to return to fighting? What was the... Uh, uh, you've been out for a while. What's been the thing that motivated you the most? Yes. Uh, I got a big fight, but uh, I know if I'm coming back for a big... I, you know, and I always... Yeah, I can tell them probably, you know, whether or not they're going to come up with something. Uh, pretty soon after my last fight, I'm going to figure, okay, I'm going to be fighting again here, obviously. Uh, so I rushed to get a lot of things done, square away a lot of things. A lot of things that were, they weren't so easy. It took me, it took me a lot, a lot of time to get settled in, being, you know, uh, kind of retired for a minute or take a break. And, and uh, you know, I moved here and there, you know, I was relocating. I just did a lot of things. So once I had everything squared away, um, you know, I, I just kept working on what was next. and. Uh, I knew, from, you know, from that point on, that you know, I, I knew, I knew, I knew early on that I was going to be fighting again. Let's put it that way. So you know, I, I just took precaution in that and trained the way that I should, like I always, like I would, regardless whether I'm fighting or whether I'm fighting or not. I'm going to be in some sort of a top competitive level as long as I'm, you know, as long as I'm healthy. I'm going to be, you know, training where there's good training. So it's just kind of the way it is. Nick, do you feel that Anderson Silva is the, uh, the greatest of all time in your opinion? Uh, you know, I, I don't really, I'm not, I don't really like to make big opinions on other fighters and who's the best and who's what. Uh, but yeah, sure, I mean, like, with, he's made the biggest, um, yeah, I'm sure he's the most important fighter, in my, my opinion, out here in the UFC, of course. Um, biggest UFC champion, biggest, biggest deal out here. Him, him, George St. Pierre, BJ Penn, you know, these are the top, top guys you can talk about, you know, um, you know, in, in past and present day, so it's, it's what it is. Ed told me he took you to lunch and you guys talked about this fight. What, what were your biggest concerns uh, when you thought about facing Anderson? Yeah, we had, we had to talk with, you know, um, I met Ed a long time ago. I didn't even know he was Anderson's manager, so we were hanging out and talking, you know, I didn't even know. <laughs> I didn't know he was Anderson Silva's manager at the time. I, didn't, I just, you know, I wasn't that tuned in to what's going on outside of the training gym. Um, just like now, really, and I, I try to stay that way best I can. But you know, you gotta, you gotta branch out a little bit and understand what's going on. Of course, I learned the hard way. But, uh, but yeah, I sat down with Ed, and um, you know, we talked about about this fight a little bit. Um, and by that time, yeah, my biggest concerns were uh, just. Um, you know, getting the right people behind me to, um, you know, represent me, and uh, you know, so we can we can land the best uh, fight contract and deal. Because I didn't, you know, before that I was we weren't talking about nothing. I had to square all these things away on my own for myself before we can get it before I can get it going. People are, you know, people didn't know what I was doing either. They're going like, okay, what do you know? Like, I gotta do what I gotta do. What I do what I gotta do is gonna be done. So. Nick, do you recognize the fact that by not going to the workout yesterday and by doing less media, it actually increases your profile and increases the buzz for this fight? Like, we go to these all the time, and there's never this many people around one fighter. Do you, do you, do you recognize that? Is that part of your, your brilliance? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, you never know how things are going to go. You, you never really know how things are going to go. But, uh, you know, yeah, of course, I'm going to try to cancel out possibilities of what's going to happen. You never know what's going to happen. But... I know uh, 
you're going to get something. It's going to be some ups and some downs in either, either direction. But there's always somewhere to go. You know, there's always a way. There's always a way to go. So. You gotta, smile at all this, though, because you got more attention yesterday than Anderson, who did show up. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a big deal not showing up to something big like this. <laughs> <laughs> On the embedded, they said that your bags went through and came to Vegas, but you didn't. So did you go through security and then decide to go back? Yeah, we uh, when we got to the airport, I was like, you know, this is, this, I think I'd rather stick my own bed tonight. I think they're going to try to jam me up with a bunch of things. Um, they were going to keep me up. It just, you know, I was like, you know what, we're going to have to, this is not looking good. I left half of my stuff at home. I'm not ready for what we got tomorrow. So, you know, we just uh, flipped a U-turn and, and hit it back home. It's like, Shh, I'm gonna do what I gotta do, show them tomorrow. I'm like, hey, sorry, you know, that's inconsiderate to the other fighters. I'm sorry, hey, you know, you, know, you go out there, you do 30 fights, 40 fights, whatever, you know, fight some of the best guys out there. Maybe, you know, I don't know. I don't know, I'm, I'm not trying to say like, uh, I'm special, I'm trying to say that, you know, Take what I can get, do what I gotta do. That's all I, that's all I can tell you. And so people want to say, oh, that's all irresponsible. I'm like, hey, look, be irresponsible for me to go out there and take an ass with me, which is probably gonna happen regardless, whether way I win or I lose. Just like in every fight I've done. So I'm not, it's not like I don't uh, anticipate the worst case scenario going out there, just like I always do and always have. I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, oh, I'm going out there, I'm going to knock this guy and you know, done what I've done. Hey, do it, you know. He doesn't know what I'm coming with, you know, all this, you know, uh, all this crazy talk. So, because that, that would be crazy. I'm not trying to give you that. I'm just trying to tell you what's really going on for you. So, Did you get your bags? Sure, yeah. I had my friends, I had people here waiting on me to pick up, stuff like that. Did you change a lot in your camp before this fight? You know, you're saying that you've had some changes behind the scenes and stuff. Are things different for you now, uh, camp wise? Uh, yeah, sure. Things are always different, always, and that's a good thing because you know you shouldn't be doing the same. You know, always making changes. You want to keep what works. That's always something you want to keep in mind, keep what works. But but you know things are always going to be changing. If not with you, then what's going on around you. So yeah, of course you know. And with change, there's there's ups and downs too. You know, um, there's, there's good and bad with everything. So who's your who's your head coach now? Um, you know, I've, I've always been kind of my head coach from day one, but I've always had a lot of coaches. I've always had, um, you know, a brilliant, brilliant um, jiu-jitsu instructor and coach, um, Cesar Gracie, and I can say the same as far as my Sambo instructor, Valerie Ignatov. I've had some excellent training partners from the very beginning. Um, I used to train with a guy named Steve Heath. He was a knife expert. He was a karate expert. He was a jiu-jitsu expert. He fought Chuck Liddell. Uh, beat a whole bunch of other guys that were, you know, back in the day that were, you know, when it when it was when it was what it was before it was on, you know, pay-per-view and I mean before it was on TV in any kind of way. You had to buy it on pay-per-view. Just, just, you know, UFC 10 to 23. And that time when I started training. Uh, you know, started training, started fighting, training for fighting. You know, I was training with some pretty important people back then, and I recognized it. it wasn't like I don't. You know, I learned real early on to know where I come from, and you know, it's, it's uh, something that's carried on. So you know, I know where I come from, and uh, you know, you're not gonna you're not gonna fool me with this or that. You know, I'm not gonna buy into no hype. I understand what's going on. You know, I don't really have too much of a life on the side of this, because this kind of takes up, you know, a lot of what's going on in my life. So it's just, um, you have to deal with that, and take it day by day, and uh, realize who you are, what's what, and put yourself in other people's shoes too, is a, uh, is a really important um, advice I could give for any fighters. I'm like, hey, if you can't put yourself in someone's shoes, how are you gonna train like them? How are you gonna fight like them? How are you gonna defend against someone like them? How are you gonna, you know, um, you know, and, and you know, for any any case, that's really important. You know, always put yourself in someone else's shoes. Do you think you would have liked to fight in the old UFC back in the day like that, or do you prefer it now? I, 
these guys have got paid enough money back then how much they're getting you know, but they're getting beat up but you know there's a lot more in it back then and there was a lot more in it for me too when i was fighting my first 10 fights there's a lot more you know uh, i'm gonna i'm just the way i'm i'm you know programmed is to do <laughs> is to fight you know there's not really there's not really much uh there's not really much i can say about it. i'm gonna fight for you i'm gonna fight for me i'm gonna fight you know fight the best i can so it's uh uh, I don't know, I didn't mean to get sidetracked with what I was saying, but, you know, what was it, what did you say? I just meant stylistically, you know, the old days of the UFC, it was a lot more raw, and yeah. in a way that, that seems to suit your personality. I'm just curious, had you been, you know, a little bit earlier in your prime, would you have liked to fight back in those kind of days? Yeah, the thing is, is like, I just, um, I was into fighting, you know, before it was important. You know, people come to me now and they're like, we always come and get into this conversation, and it's like, you know, I was just, the thing is, I was just doing this for it's cool. They're like, um, you know, people ask me all kinds of stuff, random people, like, you know, doesn't that get annoying people coming up to you? Or, you know, why would you want that? I'm like, hey, you know, um, I'm like, I was, I didn't mean for all this to happen, you know? I didn't, I didn't mean to be uh, coming off as not a good uh, role model for young kids and all that stuff, you know? I hope I hope to in the future and nowadays come off as the best type of role model I can be. Um, you know, even though I'm missing missing a Wednesday on a big event like this, it's not you know kids remember to brush your teeth too. <laughs> while you get cavities, all it's no good. So that's you know what I mean. I, I just like I said, I got a fight though. So um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna you know, bear with me as I do the best I can do. I'm gonna try to dodge a few punches. <laughs> Uh, that's that's what I gotta focus on, and that's how I've made it as, as far as I have with what I've had to work with. If you want to give me something more to work with, maybe I can give you something more to work with as far as like a Wednesday, and uh, you know, and, and I can have invested in that, um, and planning and, and leading up to what I gotta do, and I, and I should have. I'm sorry I didn't make it happen. Do you think and then? I would like to. Yes. Yeah, so what? So what's missing then? What's you hire on the right type of people who are game to be a part of what we got going on that are good for you, and uh, you know. And I'm not, you know, where I'm based. You don't always have a lot of, uh, you know, we're the potential where where we are. There's no other sort of potential out there for um, for this uh, this sort of thing that we can envision what we need. You know what I mean? Like they're not, you know. Um, there's not a big market out there right now for that, especially where I live. Um, and, you know, for the, as far as the rest of the world, too, like, we're talking a lot about that. Last time I was in uh, a meeting with, with Dan White, Tita's, and the rest of these guys on the time is now, we're talking about fighters getting hurt, things like that. A lot of it has to do with preparation, planning, and people worrying about stuff that they had to worry about their last fight. And focusing on that is the most important thing that you forget. You fall short, here's these goods and bads come in again. So you're focusing on these goods, and now you forget about, you know, whoever was taking care of your old stuff. You know, did he get paid? <laughs> I'm like, so now he's not around now. So now you got to deal with that and make up for that. So, so, but you're always getting stronger, too, though, in this. So. Does fighting for the belt motivate you? Um, right now, fighting um, for what i got to fight for is, is motivate you know, uh, training and and uh, keeping my head on my shoulders after what I've gotten myself into is what is what motivates me. That's what enhances my sense of security. And that's how you're gonna feel when you wake up. You have to fight me. You wake up in the morning like shit. Now what am I gonna do? You know. So you have to figure it out. Hopefully you're like me. You already got it figured out. You know what you gotta do first things first. So you're doing this for as long as you're doing it, and then you can you know you get Silver, it done. Silver's been promised the next title shot. If you beat him, do you feel that you should win? Um, you know, I don't really want to give an opinion on that. Uh, I don't really have an opinion on it, really. I'm just focused on what I got to do. And uh, what I think is right, I don't think it really matters in the end, what I think. Uh, so, you know, I just, you know, um, try to keep it to myself if I could. Even, you know, I did have an opinion, really. But I, honestly, I can't say I don't really, off the top of my head, I don't. So I'm not going to tell you something like, oh, I think I should. I don't care, honestly. I'm just focused on, you know, this just walking out of here on Saturday, like after the fight, win or lose. Can I walk out? Can I get up? And walk out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can I, you know, so, Nick, survive you your tonight? 
Hey, how much do you weigh right now? Um, I'm a good, I'm a good little, uh, I'm a good little bit over, but I'll make, I mean, I'll make, I'll make weight. It's not like, you know, Nick, you were talking about people, uh, you're saying you don't have what you need necessarily, and I don't know if it's a criticism, but a lot of time people said, oh, maybe Nick should just go to a different camp. Like, there are places where people could take better care of you, yeah, you know? I, I don't really, I'm not, right off, you know, right off the bat, like, right off, right off, um, making that kind of a switch for me, especially like a, a year or two ago before I was taking this break, mm -hmm. it was completely out of the question. Mm -hmm. With that year off and understanding of, of what's going on in the world today, and what's why I spent a lot of time moving around and meeting people and learning how you know, understanding how things would be if I was here or there, and um, you know, I think nowadays I have the capacity to go places for extended periods of time. So you know, it's now it's not even a question of whether I, you know, I can go somewhere for a short time, back and forth. I really don't have a problem with flying in and out of anywhere nowadays. Uh, when I was a little younger and it was like, you know, big hassle, everything, traveling, and it's, it's just a lot of things, you know, were just straight to the gym. I gotta hammer these workouts. You don't understand. I gotta do my three workouts today. I gotta do my, my uh, you know, I'm missing this. I'm fucking, it's crazy. You know what I mean? So, uh, and, and and I see that, I recognize that, and a lot of people are like, hey, you know, like, just don't worry, just do what we're gonna do. Hey, you're gonna get it done. You know, you're, I've seen people just grind themselves into the ground. And I've already been there and come back from that and, you know, suffered as a result of that, dealt with it. So I see I see it when it happens to people and not even just in MMA, like a guy starts doing triathlon all of a sudden, he's so into it, he's so, he's so crazy because he knows so much more about it than other people because he actually put the time in and ran that extra mile and, and, and went and raced and, and did like, you know, did these long races. Nobody's done that. So now he knows that he knows he's got this, you know, back when nobody was doing this, I knew that I knew what was what I had, you know, 10 fights. Nobody knew that. So, you know what I mean? You get kind of, you know, you're kind of fanatical real quick and you go and right, that's what I'm saying. I'm not like so crazy about this whole thing anymore. Now I'm just like, you know, using what I have to work with get where I got to go. And, Still well, it has to feel good that people come to you, though. Guys like Yancey Medeiros and guys come to you now for that expertise. Yeah, it's fun. You know, these guys, they come. People need to know things. And, um, you know, I got the answers for them. Sometimes it works. Some, sometimes my, stylistically, it works really good for them. You know, I work really good with people. Sometimes stylistically, we don't, you know, they don't like what I have to, you know, and that's fun. You know, and I get a lot of good out of those type of guys. They can't, not everybody can do what I do. And... I, you know, I a lot of times I'm not fighting somebody that can do what I do. I'm fighting some crazy little strong dude who's, you know, trying to win, you know, a UFC title one time and fight a few fights. And probably, you know, it's, it's his little short time. You know, I'm doing this the whole time. So, but you know what I mean? I'm going to have to fight someone like that. Um, so it's good. And I've always had to fight someone like that. So I've always had these guys that, you know, we don't stylistically, we don't, you know, um, we don't really work out so good, but at the same time, I get great training with these people too. So, but and then, as far as the people that are more so stylistically like me, we, we hit it off, we go good, you know. But the downside is like I'm in Northern California, and not everybody's a bit too thrilled on it. I think it's great. There's a lot of great things about where I live. Uh, I'm in Northern California, we got, we got lakes, or now I'm an hour from Sacramento, San Francisco. Um, you know, I, mean, I go I go to Lake Tahoe in the summers. I'm freezing cold in the winter. I don't even go nowhere near that. You know what I mean? So, but like, I go up there in the summertime. I do some races. It's nice. It's what I like to do. So I like living there, and it's it's, it's worked out for me. Nick, how do you use your environment to train? Uh, seasonally, like in the summertime, I'm usually doing uh, a few races. Keeps me in good shape. When I, um, you know, it keeps me from uh, keeps me from getting hurt. Really, you know. You don't have a lot of strength to work with after you go do a race, and you're trying to make a recovery week comeback. So, you gotta focus a lot on uh, technical aspect of things and uh, get you know get around the getting hurt part. And that's not hard because you don't have a lot of strength and energy to go out there and, and, and beat yourself up. And by the time you do, you've already put a, a few recovery workouts in to get yourself you know feeling good and back and you know training good. You're one of those athletes that's able to do that though. I spent a lot, a few days teaching and giving a class maybe, yeah, and I'm completely drained and done for. I'm not going to train hard, I'm gonna, you know, but I'm going to go, this is where I'm going to get a lot of my important training out of this time. So, um, you know. What's different about being like a regular endurance athlete and then being you know, an MMA like, fighter? Uh, it, it's, 
an endurance athlete. A lot, you know, tip, um, you have certain types of MMA fighters, right? You got strong guys, you got wrestlers, you got one dimensional fighters, you got guys that are all really skilled. You got some of these guys out there now are really skilled doing jiu jitsu, they're doing boxing, and they're you know, and they have to learn the right way to go. They're not just strong. They don't always get over on someone for being strong every time. So they've had to, in their training, they've had to find ways to take the path of least resistance, you know, whether they're either strong or whether they've trained harder than someone so not, they're not strong that day and they put in the time to beat them themselves down to where they're at this uh, even strength level now. And now you're going to take the, you know, path of least resistance to get to where you're going. Nick, what's your biggest you know what advantage of 184? But you have a lot of fighters that they don't learn. They, they don't learn to take the path. They're just strong, and they get by like that. And you can, as a fan and as a as a fighter, you're gonna start to recognize these types of people that are that are doing this. And, you have uh, a very unique and what you're seeing style. out there, and then you can kind of you know take your pick for yourself. That's yeah, what's fun about this whole thing. Yeah, sure, it's fun. I'm gonna have a good time with that, just like anybody. It's a good time, you know. Of course, you know. It doesn't always mean you're a fighter and you gotta go and do what I gotta do. <laughs> Nick, so could you talk about it's not, that doesn't always have to be funny. Going up to 185, what's your biggest advantage? Uh, I'd say I'd say uh, I have a really big advantage at 170. As long as I come in, you know, to a good 70 to 80 percent of my ability, which is tough. I've come in with less than that before. You know, I've never really amounted to 100 percent. I think on my way out to a fight, you know, I can say I've been pretty close here and there and looks pretty good here and there. Um, but I, you know, I, I've really never been out there like a whole full 100%. So for me, I think I, um, I can always amount to, regardless of the weight class and who I'm fighting and what my potential physical uh, abilities, regardless of weight, I think I'm going to be healthier and stronger, of course, you know. And I'm always going to come out at a minimum of 85, you know, if I'm healthy and uninjured and all that good stuff. I'm always going to come out of a good 85% feeling good because I'm just not, you just be cutting less weight. And uh, and the thing is, if I have the right time, type of time of preparation and, and team behind me to get down to my optimal weight and my optimal training and there's the right stuff, I just, I'm going to do it. I'm going to look better than I'm going to look at, at 185 pounds. But we can more so guarantee that I'm going to come in at least feeling half good, uh, you know, for the most part. That's what I, that's what I'm, my take is. And that, yeah. from, this, from the last two times I've, I've fought there that way. So, you know, that's a funny question. Yeah. How do you beat Anderson so uh, Keep your head on your shoulders. And, uh, now, you know, you got, I gotta go, we're gonna have to find that out. It's, a lot of times I get, um, that's what I'm here for, from the beginning. And a lot of times, you know, by the time I go out there to fight, uh, you know, I got, I'm, I'm almost curious to find out. You're like, are you excited? No, but I do want to know, you know, how I'm going to get through this. So I'm, just, I'm you know, we're going to go see. Do you get excited, though, when you roll into Vegas and there's a billboard that's, you know, five stories high with your head on it? I mean, does that give you any kind of like, all right, that's kind of cool? It's been happening though, since I was like I know. Uh, 24. No, it's so you're used to it then, Nick. That's yeah. yeah. Billboards and, and you know people don't notice them build those billboards. I was I can walk past all these. You know, a lot of times <laughs> fight fans they know. You know, people that watch fighting sports fans sometimes they recognize, but they're like, yeah. they can't take some too long to figure it out before. So it's not like, but yeah, when you're walking running around, running around with your friends and you're like, hey, you guys are on, on the billboard. That's you know, yeah, of course, that's cool. You know, I mean, uh, sure. You know. It was cool when I got out the airplane. I was cool. Man. So. Are you the this all? thing as two legends? Uh, you know, you and Anderson. Do you ever look at yourself as, as a legendary fighter? I mean, you're at that stage. Some of the guys I beat. You know, some of the guys I fought in the past. Stuff like that. How do you view yourself? Um, I don't know. I take a, a consistent perspective of myself. You know, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a moving. Object you're trying to like, you know, let's. I really don't know because I'm always on the move, I'm always on the go. So, the way I see myself, I don't know. It's from day to day, I gotta get through the day before I, before I make a judgment like, that's what. Are you refreshed at all after the time away? It seemed like before you stepped away, you were kind of burned out on the sport. Sure, yeah. We get burned out after fighting too many fights, too much fights. I was supposed to fight George Sanders. two fights before I got. If I'd have fought him when I was supposed to fight him, he would have worked. Ain't no way he won. There's no way. I think he hurt his leg. Like, lucky hurt your leg. That was a great fight right about then. You know, by the time I got the final, I don't care. You can fight. Do you want to do this? 
I'm gonna do this, man. All right. Whatever. You know? Like right now, to be honest with you, like at, at that point in time, I, I really did not care. I it, had it gone either way, you know. I had already gone through it with the whole press conference. Oh, hey, sorry you lost the fight, man. I'm like, like what? The like whatever, you know, like. Well, what fight did you care the most about then? Huh? What fight in your career have you cared the most about? Uh, I think I was gonna fight a guy named Scott Bills uh, before I fought uh, Chris Lytle. Mm -hmm. Chris Lytle was a good fighter, but I was gonna fight. I was gonna fight uh, Scott Bills and. He didn't show up. Jake Shields was supposed to fight Chris Lytle. Jake Shields got like a real bad infection in his leg. It blew up, disgusting, huge. Uh, so like, man, Jake, grab your leg. And uh, so anyways, I, I was gonna fight Scott Bills though. And I was, you know, the guy looked good. He looked like he was, I don't know who he is nowadays or what, but he looked, he looked real good. I was gonna fight him, my second fight ever. I think, yeah, my second fight ever. And uh, then he put, hey man, you know, you have to believe in yourself. We'll fight this dude. He's at 23. You know Caesar. Yeah. So it put me in that fight. It was a, I shouldn't even have been fighting that dude, but you know, I had a good night, and um, it, we went from there. What about the layoff? How is it? Uh, have you ever gone that? You know, almost two years. No, or? no, not yet. You know, it was, it was, it was. There's like I said, there's some ups and downs with that, but I feel for me like it was probably a good thing. You know, um, I just had too, you know, too much fights. For, you could say, okay, all these, you know, I'm gonna fight these. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't feel right about fighting guys that I know I'm gonna win. I've never had a fight, no, I'm gonna win. I've never had a fight. Ever. Of course, whoever's ever thought I was gonna win. Strike Force had a few fights where people were like, thought I was gonna win. I'm like, great. Now they think I'm gonna win. I'm supposed to win. This dude's like, gets his Rocky story. Like, put that in perspective. I'm like, now that you, am I supposed to win? I'm like, I've already was supposed to win all these times. You know, I'm not doing that much better than I was the last time. And this guy is like, his fight of his life. So even the guys that had like a smaller, uh, were a smaller name than me, it was like their biggest shot ever. People don't take that into consideration. So every time I was fighting somebody like that, every time, I never had no, no chunks. The first, the only person you don't know who I was when I fought uh, Mike Wicks. This guy I don't know who he is. I don't. I was the first guy I ever fought. You know, and that guy Scott Bills. But guess what? I didn't fight Scott Bills. The flip got the switch got flipped, and then I fought. Uh, Chris Lytle, mm -hmm. and then I'm fighting Joe Hurley and all those people I don't know all of a sudden, and then I'm going to Japan, and that was that. Now we're here. So. You, you fight because you want to or because you have to, Nick? You always talk about kind of fate and destiny, that you're just a fighter. You fight because you want to or because you have to, or because life chose you to? Uh, I, I, yeah, it, it's just, it's a, uh, yeah, you know, I didn't really have much of a choice once I started fighting. I mean, what? I was doing with Caesar too. It was like, hey, you're fighting June 15th. I think it was June 15th. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, fuck, this sucks. So I'm, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, really like 17, 18. So, you know, that was rough. What, yeah. How about now? What's up? How about now? I mean, obviously that was then, this is now. I mean, are you fighting because fighting. you want to or because fighting. you feel like you have to? Opportunity wise, you know, uh, I, I've got to. See, for me, I don't look at this like, uh, I don't look at MMA and fighting. For me, I don't look at it as a career. I look at it as an opportunity. It's just one big, everyday opportunity. Just like, I, how do you see yourself? I'm like, I don't know how to get through. Today is an opportunity. I'm like, I have, you know, an opportunity to make the best of this opportunity. So I'm going to have to get through it. And that's, you know, I care if that sounds crazy. That's just how, that's how I feel about it. Nick, a couple years off, we got to see you. You were out and about, you were smiling, you were having fun, you were kind of out of that war mode, you know what I mean? You were, you were out of fight mode, you were kind of getting to relax. When, was it tough to get back to this, to getting into fight mode, to getting into that kind of pulled back? When, when you saw me where? What's up? When was this just in? Just the past couple years. Just past, while, while you haven't year, been fighting and, you know, enjoying. Like in, in Dallas, for instance. When we saw you out in Dallas. Just kind of enjoying yeah. life and not yeah. being the well, fighter. I was getting Nick a lot Diaz. of stuff done out there, you know, I was like, First of all, I did not want to go to Dallas. I was like, Dallas? I'm like, are you laughing because I keep doing that? I keep no, I think it's funny. I don't really go to yeah, Dallas. Oops, been at least I don't actually say the whole word. Uh, I'm getting better. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's uh, cool. It's the internet, Nick. It's fun. Right. I know. I feel better about that now. Uh, 
but yeah, I didn't want to go. Like, I didn't want to go anywhere. I'm like, man, this is so. So I had to work myself up to all these things. I'm like, look, I'm having a great time. Yeah, I make the best out of it. That's what I learned to do too. Um, you know, you get better. I think everybody gets better at making the best out of the situation. You know, so I just done. Like I like I always just say, I've done the best with what, uh, what I had to work with. <laughs> you took a two-year break from fighting. Your fans didn't take a break from supporting you. I mean, they were constantly talking about you, asking you when you were going to get back into the octagon. Um, knowing that no matter what, they have your back, how much does that mean, um, having all these fans support you? That's great, you know. I, I appreciate them. They, I mean, uh, I think it's safe to say that I, you know, I understand them. They understand me. That's great. I, you know, I appreciate it. I really do. You said earlier that you did. By the time the George fight got there, that you didn't care if you won or lost. I mean, how do you feel about compare that feeling to now? What, what do you mean? When I, when I what? Well, earlier you were saying that it, the George fight, it just took so long to get there. And you, had, you know, it, it fell apart. You had a leg injury. And by the time you got there, you were just kind of over it. That well, not that I won or lost. It was more so whether I get the fight or don't get the fight. I'm like, if, if, if we're gonna, you know, but now you're asking me to fight. I'm not. I'm done asking you to fight. Same thing now. I'm not here because I want to fight too at the same time. I'm like, if the opportunity presents itself, yes, great. Now this freaking opportunity has presented itself. I'm like, damn it. We're not. I'm like, so, you know, yeah, I can't. There's no, I'm not going to not take, I'm not going to sit around and go, everybody like, oh, well, you didn't take advantage of your opportunity. You know what I mean? I'm not going to go through that. For, that's not going to be no good. So, yeah, I've got myself into this. I've got to fight for the, for the you know, Make the best out of my opportunities. Guys, cool. that's it. Thank you Thanks, very much. Nick. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. Great to see you. Thanks, Nick. This way, please.